what I want to talk about is the fact that we're going through, and, and this is a big picture, this is framing the whole day, okay? So it's interesting finishing with the framework. Because we're going through a time of unprecedented change. And we all know that. I mean, that's the reason we're here today, because when you're going through change, you want to get as much information as possible, right? But the interesting change is that the senior marketers that I talk to don't want to be known as marketers anymore. They feel that marketing is way too limiting to what they actually do. And in fact, most of them would rather be known if they're sitting in the C-suite or the boardroom as the chief customer officer. So we're seeing this thing of the CMO is too limiting, so they want to be the CCO. And the interesting thing is, it's happening. We are seeing chief customer officers popping up everywhere. It started in the US about three years ago, but recently uh, well, Mark Hassel at uh, Virgin Australia was probably the first high profile CCO here. And now we've got uh, Westpac has appointed a CCO. We're starting to see this become increasingly common in the C-suite. So why is it happening and what do we need to do? How many, how many heads of marketing here, interestingly? Probably not that many. Yeah? Okay. So as head of marketer, this is your career opportunity. Okay? For everyone further down the greasy pole, this is where you should be going. You don't want to have the head of marketer's job plan to become the chief customer officer. Now I've got a quiz for you. Oh, and this is the evolution from chimpanzee to computer worker. Right. What does this, this, anyone know what that is? That's actually a sort of 17th century painting of the Roman legions, what they'd imagine it would look like. They didn't have ca um, digital cameras back in the... Bingo? Did someone fill in all the cards? Excellent. And if someone else got... I can have them. Okay. Alright. Um, so that's the Roman Legion. They didn't have digital cameras, so that's what someone imagined the Roman Legion was like. Oh, okay. What, what words missing? What, what are you missing? Okay, what does the Roman Legion have in common with the way we do business today? Anyone? What does the Roman Legion, which was very popular around just before the time of Christ, have in common with the way we do business today? Process driven, but structurally, this is they had the Roman Senate, the generals, and then they had they this was the first silo. How many marketers here work in a silo? Oh, over there. That's the other team. Yeah, and, and this was very effective if you're doing battle with the enemies of Rome. Yeah? But interestingly, in marketing, we still use the same language. We target the audience. We target the enemy. We mount a campaign. Yeah? We kill our... Uh, well, if, especially if you're working for a tobacco company, you kill your customer. <laughs> Eventually. But this is the structure that they developed to become the largest empire in Europe because it is very effective. Interestingly, it became very common in business. And in fact, at the time of the Industrial Revolution, most armies had this structure because it was hard to beat. So they went, oh, how are we going to structure a business? Oh, we'll have lines of business, silos. Well, each business will either be product focused or service focused or God forbid segment focused. We actually you know, care about our customer. And then in the, uh, the 20th century, marketing came along. Before that there was sales, but then we had marketing. Where does marketing fit in? Oh, well, let's just stick it across the bottom. You know, it's the face to the market, so we'll put it at the bottom. Now the interesting thing about this structure is you start off at the bottom as a junior and as you become more experienced and, and more adept at what you do, you get up, up, up further away from the customer. You know, by the time you get to the C-suite and the board, if you fall over a customer, it's purely by accident that you're stepping out of your limousine. You know, 
there's, there's uh, up at the C-suite, Alan Joyce, God forbid he actually sees the people in economy on a, qu on a Qantas flight, let alone a Jetstar flight. But that's what happens. That we put the people that are respons most responsible and most able to make a change as far away from the customer as possible. And this is quite simple. What's happened in the late 21st, uh, 20th century? Complexity. The world has become more complex. So this beautiful organisational chart brought to you by Human Resources suddenly has these dotted... <laughs> Which button is it? Ah, these dotted lines. How many people have an organisational chart that has dotted lines? Most of them. Because I've seen them. You know, there's these dotted lines that don't work. But we had to invent the dotted line for the organisational chart because the world got messy and it got complex and the people that caused this complexity are always technology people. You know, when they invented technology, suddenly there was this infinite number of ways of speaking to the con consumer and God forbid, the consumer can speak back. I mean, who was the idiot that created social media? They can actually talk and say terrible things about us. We were very happy with our old system, command and control, sitting up the top, this is what you're going to think about our brand and we're going to spend millions of dollars convincing you. Now, now we've got customers that actually have expectations and if we don't deliver them, if we don't deliver their individual expectations, they'll tell someone about it. They won't just tell someone, they'll tell their 542 Facebook friends who will tell their Facebook friends who suddenly we've got a bad reputation for customer service. This is because we fool ourselves every day. Has anyone seen this diagram here? Anyone recognise this? It's called the Kinefin framework, and I'm not going to do a spelling bee because it's Welsh. Okay? Kinefin starts with a C, and what it says is that we think, because we're human beings, we like to think that the way we live is simple. In a simple world, there is cause and effect. You do this, and then this happens, and then this happens, and then we get a sale. How many times have we felt like, oh yeah, we'll just run this campaign and that'll solve the problem? You know, because that's in this world. Cause and effect, simple, best practice. Sometimes it gets complicated and messy. Complicated is the way complex systems work, but in actual fact, the world we live in is complex. And there's a whole area of science that is called complexity theory. Is anyone aware of complexity theory? You might, don't get it confused with chaos theory. <laughs> In chaos theory, you just give up and go home. Chaos theory says, as mere human beings, you have no chance in hell of navigating this. So don't, we're not talking about chaos, we're talking about complexity theory. Complexity theory says, that the system we are looking at is so complex that it is impossible to know cause and effect. It is impossible to know best practice. But what we can see are trends in response to a stimulus or activity that we undertake. What better definition of today's marketing than that? Your customers are complex. The marketplace is complex at best we can do things and we'll either get a positive response or a negative response or no response. Now, if you get a positive response, what's the first thing you do? Do more of it until you get a negative response. If you get a negative response, do something else. And if you get no response, that's the worst place to be because you don't know why. At least negative and positive is an outcome. This is the Kinefin framework. And if you get a chance, it's worth reading because it gives you an insight into the world you actually live in as opposed to the fairy tale that most academics and, uh, and business people want to believe they live in. Simple. It's not simple. And it can be complicated, but my God, it's mainly complex. And we see that in the structures of our organisations. We try and have simple structures to solve complex problems. That's why I get phone calls from people saying, how do we integrate digital channeling into our marketing? <laughs> I go, well, why have you got a digital channel? 
Because what's the CEO been saying? Oh, we're customer centric, we're customer centric, we're customer centric. You want to be customer centric? That's the structure you need for customer centric. Why do I say that? Because look, in the middle there, there's the customer. Customer in the centre. Build the business around it. So all of those touch points, because the brand is not built by the ad you ran, it's not built by the advertising, it's not built by the way your website looks. It's built by every interaction your customer has with your organisation, your sales team, your call centre, what their friends say, what your children say. This is what, if you want to be a brand manager, you need to manage all of those things. And that's why the Chief Customer Officer has come into existence. Because if you're just a marketer, largely in the C-suite they think of you as the colouring in department, okay? Oh, you do the pretty pictures. But if you're the Chief Customer Officer and you're responsible for customer, you are still building brand, but you're building it through customer touch points. Here they are. Customer touch points. Customer management platform, this is where technology comes in to allow you to manage it. Marketing, and there's the business where they belong, aligned to the customer. Now, if you show this to HR, you'll completely do their head in. I'm not actually suggesting that this is your organisational chart. What I'm suggesting is this is philosophically the approach you need to take if you're going to become a customer-centric organisation. Everyone following so far? Because now it's going to get really weird. <laughs> okay? We're going to go into the world of uh, quantum physics. Okay? Quantum physics is in the world of complexity. And that's because how many people have seen a customer path to purchase like this? How many of you have a customer path to purchase like that? You may have even simplified it. I saw one that's a straight line. Because that's exactly how I buy something. I'm sitting there going, I want a car. What sort of car do I want? I want that car. What features do I want? I want those features and I'll buy it now. What price can I get? It's, this is simple thinking about complexity. This is trying to do a very sort of nursery rhyme approach to planning customer pathways to purchase. This is what it actually looks like. <laughs> Does anyone know what that is? <coughs> it's an electron cloud. This is mapping electrons as they move through space at a subatomic level. Now, here's what they found out about electrons. Electrons will be any place in the universe until we look for them and then they'll appear where we want them to be. Does that sound like the way you approach your customers? When we look for them, they're there, 2,000 of them ready to buy my credit card. In actual fact, they have life. It's a random life. Behavioural economics will tell us that it's largely irrational. We are all irrational. Unlike uh, classical economics, which says that we only act in a rational way, behavioural economics tells us we're irrational, but lucky for us as marketers, we are predictable in our irrationality. We will do the same stupid things over and over again. So, here is the customers flying around here. What we need to do is create a business model that looks for the opportunities that when those little electrons of a customer appear in our brand area, we create the optimal experience at every touch point. Now, the only reason we can do that now is because of technology. If you're a marketer that has not at least tried to embrace the concept of technology and the way it can be used as a tool, you are becoming largely irrelevant. This is why I say to people, there is no digital anymore. Everything is technology. Every way of dealing with customers, of being able to customise, personalise the experience, deliver to their expectations, requires a technology platform. The role that you will play 
is in designing and managing that platform. So if you want to become, if you're a CMO or a marketer and you want to move to customer, here's what you have to do. The first thing you have to do is give up the concept of command and control. You are no longer in control. In actual fact, I would argue you were never in control, but we managed to delude ourselves for a good 50 to 150 years. You are no longer in control, but what you have at your disposal is the ability to collaborate. The best marketers are great communicators. They are great thinkers, and so what you can do is get people to collaborate within your organisations, across organisations, to actually deliver a customer, ex develop and deliver a customer experience. We all agree? So tick. Secondly, and you've heard this a thousand times, but I'll say it again. We are not fighting a war with our customers. We don't have to mount campaigns to do them in, okay? But we have to learn to be responsive to their individual needs when they want something and how they want something. We can do things to attract them into our field, but then we have to, when we've attracted them there and we know they're there, like the electron, when we look for it and they appear, we have to know what to do to keep them in that area long enough to get the value from them in exchange for fulfilling their needs. So we have to go from campaign to responsiveness. Now this is a really scary one for a lot of marketers. The generalist is dead. If you're a jack of all trades, then you are now the master of none. Okay? You cannot, and a lot of senior marketers go, oh, but I'm a very good generalist. I go, I don't care. Marketing is so complex, you need a team of specialists. But what you can become, if you're not a specialist, is the great aligner. Being able to get teams of people that are specialists in their field and learn how to align them to the objective of what you want to achieve in the delivery of the customer experience. That's the role of the senior generalist marketer has to move beyond that to be the great aligner. The next one is, and this is a, a, a finance one, marketing has traditionally been seen as a cost of business. That's why they give you a budget to spend. Don't go over it. Spend the budget. It'd be nice if we get a return on it, but you know, just spend the budget. We have to move away from that to being a business investment. This is why your best friend is someone that can work with you to build the business case as to why you're actually a value creator. It's an important part of moving to the customer experience because you will be giving getting more responsibility, but there'll be more accountability that comes with it. And then the final one is marketing in that old structure where they stuck it down the bottom and brand off to the side was a support for business. How many people work in a financial services company here or have? Okay? Interestingly, that they think of marketing as the thing that they do after they do business. You know, oh, we need more people buying credit cards because, like, I don't know about you, the thing I need is another credit card in my wallet, right? No. So they use marketing as a sales technique and it's a support. This is the opportunity. We have to, as a profession, become leaders. We have to be the people that lead our businesses to the customer. We have to be the advocates of the customer. And we have to use the tools at our disposal to make it happen. So this is not a negative story. This is a positive story because the time has come to give up on 2,000 years of stodgy structure that was started by the Romans. And it's a great structure if I want to kill people and take over their lands. If I'm into the business of raping and pillaging, terrific. But we have to move beyond that because technology allows us to do it. So what we need to do is take this back into our organisations and start talking about the role of marketing, not as the colouring in section, but as the advocate and the champion of the customer through the role of the Chief Customer Officer. Are you with me? Thank you.